Some of us are moving from Windows 7 to Windows 10 out of necessity or out of choice or some combination therein. If you know just a few things, the process is not too bad. It's nothing like uh, Windows 8 or anything. So let's cover a few things such as local versus cloud accounts, the start menu, the Edge browser which is new with Windows 10, a couple changes in File Explorer, and the venerable control panel which is still available with Windows 10. The concept of cloud-based user accounts was just a twinkle in the eye of the committees at Microsoft with Windows 7. So let's take a look at uh, user accounts with Windows 7 here. Go into Control Panel, go into User Accounts, and there we see nothing about a Microsoft account, which is a uh, cloud-based account. So let's take a look at how things have changed with user accounts with Windows 10. It's very likely you're going to encounter an option or an inability to avoid creating a cloud account with Windows 10, even during installation of Windows 10, because hooray for cloud-based accounts. So, if you've chosen not to use this, here are the steps to make your account a local account. Click on Start, go to Settings, which is a pared-down version of Control Panel, go to Accounts, and there's your account. You can choose to make it a local account by clicking on that. You'll have to type in your password, click Next, and then you can create your local account. There's a new Start menu with Windows 10. Nowhere near as dumb as Windows 8, but eh, it's a change from Windows 7. So let's take a look at Windows 7's Start menu here. So if you wanted to add something to the Start menu, you'd right-click on it. You'd go Pin to Start menu. We'll just show you that again real quick with a different application. Let's take Notepad, right-click on it, choose Pin to Start menu, and there it is. So here's what you're going to see with the Windows 10 Start menu. Click on Start, and you've got your various tiles. You might see one that's active, like the one for weather there that has things moving around, taking up CPU cycles. We can add something to the Start menu by right-clicking on it, just like with Windows 7. Pin it, and then I can right-click on it to unpin that, and then we'll unpin another one. And it's kind of got a waxy element to it, so if you grab a tile and move it, it just kind of goes where you drop it, kind of amorphously. Not a big deal, kind of cool. Takes up a few more CPU cycles. That's the Windows 10 Start menu. Another new thing you're going to encounter with Windows 10 is the Edge browser. So, really not that special of a browser. Might be a little more secure, might work a little better, might work a little worse. So here it is. The th main thing you're going to have to get used to is the fact that the address bar pops up in this middle area here, as opposed to the top, at least at first. After you've visited a website, then the address bar is up on top where you're used to it being. That's the main thing you're going to run into with the Edge browser. Otherwise, it's a pretty normal browser in a lot of ways. So, something that I have run into on uh, all Windows 10 computers I've uh, managed is you try to set the default browser and... So you keep trying to set it to different ones, even choosing the uh, Microsoft one, and it just won't choose a default. Now, where does that manifest itself? Well, when you try to open up a, uh, a link from within an email, for instance, it's going to bug you about which browser you want to use. Maybe you like that, maybe you don't, but uh, it won't stay, at least by default. Maybe we'll cover this in another video. And now for some minor, I would argue, positive changes in File Explorer. Here we are in Windows 7, and uh, Open File Explorer by the same method. Click on the folder icon. And you see libraries, you see favorites, you see your primary locations. Yep, seen this before. Well, with Windows 10, there's some uh, very minor changes in this area. So let's take a look at Windows 10. Open it by the same icon. You might see a few more things in Quick Access. It's called Quick Access rather than Favorites. You, uh, the folders look just a tiny bit different, 
But one of the big changes is the ribbon up on top. Just like with Microsoft Office, they added the ribbon. So you click on the ribbon to get to things like view, whatever share is, and home. And you do things that you might do with other places like uh, organize would be where you do some of these things on Windows 7. So if you wanted to select all, you can do that from the ribbon. Thank goodness the control panel is still with us with Windows 10. So here's how you get to the control panel easily with Windows 7. Click on the start button and in the search bar there you type control panel and then we'll take a quick look at what shows up with the Windows 7 control panel. All right, so we see our normal things there. Good place to do changes to your computer. Now here's Windows 10, and one thing you'll notice is the search bar is always there. Don't have to click Start to get to it. If we open Control Panel, we're going to find that it's exquisitely similar to Windows 7. So this has been moving from Windows 7 to Windows 10. Not a complete comprehensive video, but hopefully we covered the nitty-gritty. Thank you.